Virginia Woolf, written by Keo McClear, illustrated by Isabel Arsenault, published by Kids Can Press. One day, my sister Virginia woke up feeling wolfish. She made wolf sounds and did strange things. When I painted her picture, she growled, "Vanessa, don't!" When her friends rang the doorbell, she moaned, "I'm not home." She scared everyone away. She said, "Do not wear that cheerful yellow dress, my favorite dress. Do not brush your teeth so loudly." She even told the bird to stop that racket. She was a very bossy wolf. The whole house sank. Up became down. Bright became dim. Glad became gloom. I did my best to cheer her up. I offered her treats. She wolfed them all down, but it made no difference. Nothing pleased her, not the cat, not my violin, not even making faces at our brother Toby. She pulled up her covers and said, "Leave me alone." Then she said nothing to anybody. I lay beside her on the bed. We were two quiet lumps under the blanket. We sank deep among the pillows. We looked out the window and gazed at the sky. We watched the clouds, a smudgy sailboat, a flying llama, and a floating castle. It was like a whole other world. Still, my sister said nothing to anybody. After a while, I said, "There must be something that will make everything feel better." I said, "Please, Virginia." I said. Say something. Finally, she replied, "If I were flying right now, I might feel better. If you were flying, where would you like to go?" I opened her atlas and named a few places: Paris, Tokyo, Mexico City. No, no, no," she said. If I were flying, I would travel to a perfect place—a place with frosted cakes, and beautiful flowers, and excellent trees to climb, and absolutely no doldrums. Where is that? I asked. She thought for a moment and said, "Bloomsbury, of course." Bloomsbury? Never heard of it. Is that near Burlington? She shook her head and sighed. Buffalo, I said. I don't think so. She growled, slipping under the covers. I flipped through her atlas, but found no Bloomsbury, no perfect place. I didn't tell my sister, but I had an idea. I found my art box and a stack of paper. And tiptoed around the room while my sister napped. I made a garden. I painted trees and strange candy blossoms and green shoots and frosted cakes. I painted leaves that said "hush" in the wind, and fruit that squeaked. And slowly, I created a place called Bloomsbury. I made it look just the way it sounded. My sister woke up. At first, she was too busy howling at the moon to notice what I was doing. I painted a swing and a ladder that reached up to the window, so that what was down could climb up. My sister started to pay attention. I brought the outside inside. I painted floating petals that looked like confetti. My sister stood up and helped. 
She said wolves like to wander around, so we painted a field with a big roaming space. We made turquoise birds and purple butterflies out of colored paper. And Virginia told a story about a gray shelled snail that passed along the earth and reached the top of a mountain without. The whole house lifted. Down became up. Dim became bright. Gloom became glad. When we were done, it was past midnight. Everyone slept soundly. The next morning, my sister woke up and said, "The flowers are floppy." I nodded. The trees look like lollipops. I nodded again. That shrub looks like an elephant. She laughed. You hate it. I groaned. No, she said. It's perfect. I love it. I smiled. She looked different, so I asked her how she felt. Much better, she said, looking a bit sheepish. Do you really feel better? I asked. Yes, she smiled and took my hand. Now let's go out and play.